Hi everyone, I'm Anthony Navarro. I'm the product manager for robotics at Udacity. I'm here to have a beer and talk about robots with you. So um, I'm going to be reading your talk here over on the live chat and kind of answering any questions I can um, about the robotics program we have, about Udacity in general, about other robotics topics, career, whatever you feel like. So I'll be watching this side and uh, let me know. Let me know what you think about the program so far. If you're in the program, if you're looking at signing up for the program, give me some, uh, give me some feedback. Looks like we've got quite a few people from around the world just looking at the different, different countries. Brazil and Honduras, Montreal. That's awesome. China. Seems like we got a good time then to get everybody in here. Korea. Philippines. Well, hopefully everybody's familiar with the robotics program. Um, it's been here at Udacity since about March. We've got one cohort going forward and another one in development right now. Uh, or sorry, in uh, waiting to get applications in and payments and then we're going to get them launched too. So we're going to have our second cohort launching very soon. Uh, yeah, here we go. We've got questions popping up. So how ROS focused is it? We do have a lot based on ROS. So the current term starts with you know getting into ROS, ROS tutorials, and teaching you really what ROS is and how to program it. And the first term is all based in Python. Second term will get more into C++. But since ROS is used in many different applications, we thought it was very important to actually go forward and you know use ROS in there. Um, where do I think oh, these things are jumping around on me? Um, what do I think robotics is going to be in the next five years or beyond? It's a good question. Um, there's a lot of you know, traditional methods that are used in robotics right now. And deep learning is obviously a very fascinating topic. It can solve a lot of problems, and, or at least it's being investigated to solve a lot of problems. It'll depend on, you know, do we hit a plateau with that? Is it going to keep growing? And so it's really interesting to watch that field and see the different applications, because even ideas like SLAM you see certain issues that SLAM has getting moved over when you go into deep learning, you get rid of those issues and so you get a better performing system and you put it on a GPU and it moves faster. So there's a lot of really interesting ideas and I think what you're going to see is these applications across, um, of course, multiple domains, you know, land, air, sea, space, but then the communications architecture between those is going to be very important and how these systems interact and so systems of systems is going to be very important in the future. How many people are already in the program? Um, we had a, quite a few, we had a few thousand apply. I don't, I'd have to look at exact numbers and everything, but we have a quite a few thousand that have applied and we ha we're waiting to see what cohort two is going to look like as far as enrollment. So we're really excited to get another cohort going though. Will taking the Udacity intro to programming course be enough to get started in the robotics course? If not, what intermediate steps would you recommend to prepare for the robotics course? So intro to, uh, intro to programming will give you a good foundational basics of robotics. However, if, you're, if you've never done a lot of the math, um, especially linear algebra. Linear algebra is a very you know, physical type of math that has a lot of applications in robotics. That if you're not familiar with that, there's going to be a more of a steep learning curve. We are investigating other ways that we can you know, get you from intro to programming or other intro level pieces 
up to our more advanced standard degrees like self-driving car and robotics. So stay tuned and we'll see you know, what happens from that. But absolutely, if, you, if you've never done programming before, Intro to Programming is a great course to start with. And I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're following on to some of the, you know, keeping up with the community in robotics because these are the people you want to keep kind of talking to and seeing if what you're interested in is in the, one of these areas. Hi there, I'm looking to forward to buying a robotic arm hardware. Any recommendation for models and brands? Uh, that's a really wide-ranging question. So there's tons of robotic arms out, out there. Um, KUKA, I used to work with some ABB robotics. Um, I'm guessing you don't want to buy a $20,000 or $100,000 arm. And so I know that there are more like hobbyist-friendly arms out there. I don't have, let me see. Um, I'm going to Google some stuff right here. Yeah, there's some good options out there that are on robot, uh, looks like Banana Robotics or Robot Shop, um, that could at least give you something to start with in the form of, you know, tens to a couple hundred dollars. So I don't have any personal recommendations. I haven't done a lot with, you know, robotic arms myself except industry side. Um, so yeah, so even when that works and just, you know, if you can get something that's based Nah, I guess it would, you could use it with whatever controller you have. But yeah, I would just look to see what's in your price range. What is the difference between machine learning and robotics? Um, a lot. So robotics is kind of, it's, they're, both of those are kind of general terms. And so robotics could apply to everything from, technically your Nest could be a, ro you could consider your Nest a robot or Alexa a robot. Uh, machine learning is just kind of a, me a way that robots, or a method that robots would use in order to, achieve a certain goal or to achieve intelligent intelligence. So when we have these intelligent and autonomous systems, they need to learn in some way. And so there's been traditional algorithms that we've done. And then now a lot that is going towards machine learning, deep learning, and so different fields of AI. So machine learning is a subset of artificial intelligence. And artificial intelligence is a tool that robots can use to be smarter, basically. Uh, sorry, I'm looking for more questions. You guys are typing them fast, so I gotta. What programming languages are used most in robotics? I would say in a lot of robotics and embedded systems, you're gonna be looking at um, C++ and C are very important for optimization. However, when you get into a lot of the learning areas, uh, Python is really good for prototyping. So those are the two that I would recommend, and that's what we go over in our course. Um, and when you go to some employers, they're gonna really wanna see, you know, C++, and some robots, if they're older robots or certain companies using it, they're going to use their own language. So it's a better, better to have a good understanding of how software interacts with the hardware than it is, I mean, a good language, it's good to know like C++, but also how does that language interact with the hardware and what are the restrictions in that pipeline? Uh, I got the Udacity sticker on my laptop from Udacity. It's, I guess, a perk of working here. <laughs> uh, how... How do you make money with robotics not working for a big company? Um, I mean, there's a lot of applications. You could, if you, with a robotics education, you could be a robotics, you could consult on robotics. Um, there's other places where you could probably, if you have a really good idea, you could look at launching a Kickstarter campaign. Um, but, you know, there is a lot that goes into productization of electronic hardware, so just keep that in mind. Can I distinguish between starting in August 16th and September 24th? Do both semesters need to be taken consecutively, or can there be a gap? So the two cohorts that we have starting, the August and the September cohorts, um, they're not, they're not, if you're going to take, like, they're not, those aren't semesters. Those are different groups starting together. So if a group of people are going to be starting on, if you're going to opt to go put a deposit down and take the uh, September one, you'll start in September. Um, and it is, doesn't affect you in any way. If you start in August, you'll you know, go in August and you'll be going through September. So it's just a matter of the start date that you want to do. Uh, do I think the nano degree in robotics will prepare you for a career in robotics? Absolutely, that's the whole point that we you know, at Udacity try to push for is we want to get you job ready. So um, if you're coming from absolutely nothing, the best, thing, the best advice I always have for people is Go above and beyond, make yourself stick out, 
do something different. If there's challenges, if there's extra projects you can do, if there's something that can differentiate your project away from others. So I actually started out as a self-driving car student in the first cohort, and one of the opportunities I got to do was lead the Thunderhill racing team uh, for the self-driving car nano degree that was offered. And so Udacity partnered with PolySync, and they put out this challenge, and I got selected to lead it. And it was an exciting experience that gave me a huge amount to talk about in the future to employers and really everyone that not only am I doing this nano degree and so are you know, many other people, but I also went above and beyond and did this. And so my best advice is if you really want a job in this area, same with you know, students in university, don't do the bare minimum. Go above and beyond, set yourself apart, and you know, make you know, yourself really attractive to employers. Yes, the, uh, so it's just, it seems like the robotics nano degree focus is on software development. How about hardware development? I assume it needs hands-on training. It, yeah, so there's a kind of a software, there's a stack of uh, disciplines when you get into robotics, which is one of the you know, very unique things about robotics. You kind of have this computer side of it, you have the electrical side, and you have a mechanical side. Um, we are not, we're not getting into any of the mechanical side of things. Uh, we're not getting into the, any of the electrical side. And even some of the integration stuff, while it will be gone over with the robots that you receive, you're not expected to write this integration piece to make drivers work, per se. Um, so really our focus is on the artificial intelligence in robotics and kind of the algorithms that go along with that. So making robots smarter is kind of the focus is what this nano degree is. Is a nano degree hardware oriented or software oriented? Uh, can you talk about the flow of the course and the projects? Um, yeah, so it's more software oriented, like I just said. The flow is you're going to kind of come in, you're going to get used to you know, a ROS project and do something with a little rover. Then there's the kinematics portion. We touch on controls and then, or sorry, we touch on perception. And so that project's just been released to the first cohort. Then we're going to get into controls a little bit more. And then we're going to get into more deep learning methods. And then term two, I won't get into because we haven't announced it yet, but it is on the horizon. So exciting things there. Mm. This is actually something I, seem, I see a lot. Oh, and it jumped again. Sorry about that. Do I need to be a robotic, or what do I need to be a robotics expert? Oh, okay. Sorry, at first I read it, do I need to be a robotics expert? To answer that one, no, absolutely not. We don't expect you to even have a familiarity with robots. I mean, that's what we're here to teach you. We want you to have some familiarity with math and programming, but we'll teach you the robotics concepts. Now, what do you need to be a robotics expert? That really depends on what you want. So to me, there's two types of people out there in engineering and you know, in robotics and everything. You have your you know, specialist and you have your generalist. Me personally, I'm a generalist. I like to know a little bit about a lot of things and be able to understand and touch on a lot of different pieces. But I'm not the super deep dive into one area, let's say like path planning, that you know, some people might want to do. Your specialists are that person. They're going to know one area extremely well. They're going to be able to solve, you know, understand all the math in and out of it, solve really cool problems with that. Um, but they may not know how to do, like, the communications architecture, and that's completely fine because you need them to solve the really hard problems in the area that they know. So to be an expert, it kind of depends on what you want. Are you somebody who likes to focus on one thing a little bit more? Do you like to focus on multiple pieces? So... That's, it's kind of hard to say that. We mean, in the robotics curriculum, we touch on a lot of different pieces, and if there's something that you really like doing, then dive in that rabbit hole a little bit more. And hopefully, right now, some of the Udacity Explorers content that we put out there shows you a little bit more of what's out there, what techniques are being used, and you can find something that you like a little bit more. How do you think deep learning can be integrated into the more traditional motion planning algorithms for robotics? For instance, can it be used to come up with a constra constrained traje trajectories? Um, I think deep learning can be integrated into a lot of things, um, but is it the right answer for th everything? That's something that I think is still out there. Um, I'm personally very interested in seeing where deep learning takes us, and I know there's a huge interest from students to kind of do more, so I'm looking at you know what else can we do in deep learning, and we do have a deep learning module coming up, so be excited about that. But sure, I mean, you could feed the robot posi the like motor positions for a robotic arm, and the ender, you know, where the end effector is as an output, and you could say use reinforcement learning to achieve that. And maybe you can do better things with it. Maybe not. It's something that we'd have to play with a little bit more to see really what 
what are the strengths of deep learning and where do they come out? Uh, answered the hard way. So robotic standard degree is a little bit more software oriented. Um, and thank you, Kyle, for linking the Medium post on there. After taking this program, how likely are graduates to land a robotics engineering position with a hiring partner or otherwise? And where are the majority of operations lo or opportunities location-wise? Um, I haven't looked at where all the opportunities are location-wise. Uh, I actually came over here from my former employer, and we were a partner on the robotics standard degree. And so they have locations all over the country. Um, robotics is all over the country. You have many, many different types, from everything from farm to you know everything cutting edge in Silicon Valley to all over the world. I mean, industrial robotics, manufacturing robotics, Amazon's hiring robotics people. There's many, many jobs everywhere, and the goal is to yes, train you in this discipline. And that's one of the reasons we want to use ROS and we want to use C++ in the course because employers are asking for these things. You know, Python's great. It's nice. It's simple, but understanding the constraints of C++ and how your code actually interacts with the hardware is very important to employers. So we do want to focus on that in the course. Oh. Are autonomous vehicles considered robotics? Absolutely. Robotics or autonomous vehicles are a subset of the robotics field. Is this the first cohort of the robotics standard degree? If not, what did and didn't work well in the first cohort? This is the first cohort, so we are hopefully doing a great job by your standards, but if there is something you're not liking, please give us feedback. Do you think I can get a nano degree while also taking courses in a university? Absolutely. Um, I actually have somebody that I knew that I met through the self-driving car program that he was a PhD student while he was taking the self-driving car nano degree and then he also jumped onto the robo nano degree. Um, I also know somebody who has been taking two to three nano degrees simultaneously and so yeah absolutely it's, it's up to you I mean you put in the time you can do it and so um, just you know that's kind of your call on your subject and you know but it's you do get a lot out of it and I do think we're the university will teach you a lot of theory. We go into a lot of application and how you could actually use that in a job that you're going to get. How many hours a week do you expect the nano degree to take? So, and you know, thank you for answering, uh, Lyndon. We say 10 to 15 hours, and that's kind of a general response. But I would say it really depends on your background. If you're, I've known people who, like again, coming from the self-driving car side, took a lot of time to go through term one. And then I know somebody who completed term one in a matter of three to four weeks. Um, so really it depends on your background, but as an average estimate, we would say 10 to 15 hours. I've currently enrolled in the first term robotics program and I'm behind my schedule. Will that affect my second term enrollment? So if you're behind schedule, that's okay. Um, as long as you can get all your projects done by the term end date at the bottom. So each of the projects has their completion date. At the very bottom, there's a little bit buffer, and then there's a term completion date. That's what you really want to hit. You got to have all your projects in by that date. And if you can hit that, then you should be well on your way to term two. I'm interested in self-driving cars, nano degree. What are the pre prerequisites? Great. So I'm actually the program manager, or the, sorry, the uh, product manager for uh, self-driving car as well. So it's kind of the similar, similar pieces where you want to know Python. If you have a C++ background, it's going to be beneficial to you as you get to term two and three on that. And then a good understanding of calculus and linear algebra because while we're not asking you to like derive anything or take integrals, we do show you notation in those kind of forms. And if you aren't familiar with that notation, it's going to be a little bit more difficult. Now, that being said, if you do get accepted to the program and you're willing to take that additional time on your own if you don't have those gaps absolutely you know just be prepared that you may be spending more on that you know 15 to 20 hours possibly than the 10 to 15. I applied and was accepted but I'm a bit hesitant about enrolling due to the fact that it's expensive and there are no job guarantees unlike other nano degrees. How will Udacity help us out with this? So one of the things we've launched in our um, classrooms that is a little bit different from when I joined self-driving you know, car because you know, Udacity's changed quite a bit in the last year 
is we have kind of career readiness. So we have projects that are optional projects and supplemental to the core course material that help you get ready. So we'll review your, you know, uh, Git or yeah, GitHub, LinkedIn. We'll review your resume. We kind of give you these career opportunities, and then we also directly link you with employers. So the way that looks, you know, from the employer side is, you know, if you finish this nano degree, we put your name out and we advertise you to employers, and we give you the chance to, you know, go and interview with them. Um, we also look at hosting challenges sometimes to do the same thing. But again, this is where, you know, if I have a thousand, you know, robotics nano degree students and an employer wants to hire ten, how do you stand out? And so that's why I think it's the most important message I can say is to, you know, really go above and beyond and really, you know, push forward in these areas. What are a few really cool applications of robotics being worked on out there? Any game changers being worked on? Absolutely. Uh, I was Googling earlier some robotic stuff, and there was like an uh, exoskeleton that I saw that was using Amazon Alexa. Um, I think I like space. So I think all the stuff with space and how, how we can handle the lack of communication or like the latency between communication is very fascinating. Um, self driving cars are, well, I think are definitely interesting. But I also think it's really interesting the communications between all these systems. So as you have systems become more autonomous, what really gets you the next level, even past a single you know, piece of autonomy, is the system of systems. And so how do you have you know, everything from you know, ground to air, or from water to air, talking to each other, and everything in between, and sharing this you know, picture of you know, its environment? To me, that's extremely exciting, and that's very game-changing. There is no employment guarantee for the standard degree. Are there any stats you can discuss regarding the percentage of students who find jobs after the course? Is it comparable to other courses? So, um, kind of an early question to ask because nobody's completed our course, not even the first term yet, um, really because this nano degree is still an early phase. Um, we, aren't, we are getting away from, I think, the job guarantee, but we do work with even bigger employers than we used to to you know, actually put you in jobs. And so, you know, coming from, you know, not in Udacity and, you know, starting as a, pro you know, um, partner, the partner I was with, we hired multiple people from Udacity based on their you know, enrollment in the self-driving car nano degree. I've seen a lot of other people get hired and do interviews. Um, really, what it kind of, um, it, is it comparable to other courses? I, I would say it's, it's a hard number to track. And to be honest, I don't have a good metric for doing that because if you go and land a job, whether it's you know, with one of our partners or with somebody else, the only way that I know that is if you tell me that. And if you don't fill out the surveys we send to you, then I have a hard time telling if you got a job or not. We do see great numbers, but we also know that more, many more people are getting jobs than are reported to us because I personally have friends that are getting jobs that aren't added into our numbers. Um, so best thing you can do for us is to help feeding the, you know, when you get those surveys, when you complete these terms, and when you do take a new job, feed that stuff back to us. I mean, do it, be it on Slack, if you have to you know, message me on Slack, or whatever you have to do. We want to hear those students' stories. So as you get through your nano degree with robotics or whatever else you're, you know, program you're in, we want to hear that because we do want to push, you know, make those numbers known. What level of, hold on. What level of Python experience is required to be successful in this nano degree? Is knowledge, experience in C++ sufficient or is Python a must? Um, Python, so in my opinion, if you know one language really well, you can do any other language, especially if you're going from C++ to Python. Python is actually really easy to pick up. The syntax is really nice. I mean, you don't have, and it does a lot of things for you that, and it abstracts a lot of things that C++ you have to deal with. So if you're good with C++, I think you'll be fine with Python. Just maybe take a couple of videos, watch some stuff. You might have to Google things a little bit more, but I don't think you'll have an issue. So reinforcement learning, I don't, uh, so the question is, how much is reinforcement learning implemented in robotics and what type of applications? I can't exactly speak on how, um, how much it's penetrated the field, but one really cool area that I saw is our, you know, our partner NVIDIA, they showed off a new simulator, they have Isaac, and they were showing this robotics uh, arm that would hit a hockey puck into a net. And they were using reinforcement learning through simulation to train this. So, you know, certain tasks like that, maybe reinforcement learning are better for. But again, 
that's, I think, what's the, the, uh, the field is still investigating. What actually makes sense to throw reinforcement learning, deep learning, you know, convolutional neural networks? What's problems that it solves? Um, do you have hiring recruiting program recruiting partners outside of the US market? We do. Um, I'm trying to think on robo robotics if we do. Um, give me two seconds to look at something. We do value, I mean, we do value our international students, so we do want to make sure that everybody gets the same opportunities and that we can partner with, you know, people that are outside of just the US. However, the US does have a lot of um, a lot of different partners and jobs that you know know who Udacity is and can reach out and reach out to us. Um, but yeah, we do have even right here. I mean, I see there's some companies, especially like KUKA, they make the robotic arm. They're a partner. I think they're out of Germany. Um, but yeah, I, there's a lot of partners that we have internationally. Do both terms need to be taken consecutively, or can there be a gap due to employment demands or travel? Um, I would say if you can take them consecutively, that's great because you're already in the method of studying and you have your habits down, but there's nothing that says you can't join at a later date. So once you complete term one, you can totally join a two, term two cohort later on. Do you use or recommend any robotics kits for use throughout the course? So we will be releasing the uh, Udacity Robotics Kit. Um, we haven't announced it yet, but it's our hardware that we're planning to ship return to. Um, but if you want to play with things on your own, I would say start with something that, ha that you can at least put ROS on. Um, once you've learned how you can use ROS and do that, then you can take it to other, pl other platforms and do whatever, whatever else you would like to do with that. And personally, I like SparkFun for finding a lot of cool things, but What are the possibilities of hiring in Pakistan? I couldn't find some hiring partners or companies from Pakistan in the field of self-driving cars or robotics. Um, I actually don't know what the robotics industry looks like in Pakistan. Um, if there are hiring partners out there that are looking to field a lot of jobs, we'd be absolutely happy to talk with them and you know, get partnerships in place. Um, but I'm not aware of a robotics company that's looking for that. But Feel free to let me know if you know of one. To what depth will control algorithms be covered? For example, will the nano degree cover concepts like state space modules or pole placement for controls? I can say I think. Um, I'd have to actually ask my curriculum lead on that one to see um, if he has w what they're looking at covering in that. Unfortunately, I don't have a good answer for you since that content's not quite out yet. Your Student in the first cohort looking to do it for a career change. How can Udacity and this robotics nano degree help you? Um, you're from India. Well, welcome. Um, I'm sure India has, you know, some applications of these. I don't know the extent of those. Um, but, yeah, I mean, again, we do career services in the classroom. And so when you want to review your resume, your LinkedIn, things like that, we offer those services that you can submit to us and we'll get feedback on. And that's at least one step to help you there. And then the best thing is I can say is, you know, if you have local meetups in your area um, or your country or whatever, wherever you can go to find these local meetups of people that are like-minded, networking is extremely important. So find other roboticists. Find people in the field and talk to them. Find out what they're looking for. Find maybe their company's hiring and they have something that they can link you up with. So, um, but Udacity will help you on the careers front and then, again, our resumes or your profile, as long as you're you know, willing to share it, which is in your settings, it goes out to our employers. And so our employers can contact you for that. Robo is still a little early, so that hasn't happened yet, but it will. I would like to know, or I'd like to try the knowledge from term one, what open source modules or models do you recommend? Um, I don't exactly know what you mean about that. Are you, if you're talking about so Gazebo is something we use in the classroom and in our simulators, and Gazebo is open source, and there's a lot of resources with Gazebo. So if you're trying to do something in ROS, um, feel free to find something that's compatible with that. I, if that's not what you mean, please type something else, and I'll try to answer that. What beer am I drinking? Uh, this is a Bear Republic Racer 5 IPA. Eh, I'm not a huge IPA fan, but it's all we had in the fridge, and it's, it's not bad. And this one's a 21st Amendment black and black. <laughs>
Not opened yet, but that's the next one if this one goes empty. Do you open source projects? Oh, sorry. Jumped again. Label out. Um, do you open source projects during your work? Do you, wait, do you use open source project during your work? Sure, I mean, we try to use open source things. All of our GitHubs are public, and so when you sign up in the course and you're doing these projects, all of that stuff is out there. Um, and we do like to try to, we do like to try to find that kind of, uh, we like open source, it's good. Why did you choose a career in robotics? Good question. Um, so my background's in computer engineering. I have actually two bachelors, a bachelor's in computer science and computer engineering, and then my master's is in computer engineering. And when I was in college, I kind of was exploring the field, seeing what was out there and learning a bunch of stuff. And I thought one of the first areas I looked into was nanotechnology. And I thought nanotechnology was really cool and I wanted to learn more about it. And I went and talked to you know, the head of our department and turns out we had a really cool like state-of-the-art nanotechnology lab. So I went and I met with the professor and he gave me a tour and explained everything about it. And I thought it was fascinating and I didn't want to do anything at all with it. So, I really quickly learned to like identify what I like, you know, what I thought was cool, investigate a little bit and find out if I actually liked it or not. And luckily I came across robotics and started my sophomore year, you know, doing built my first robotics, my sophomore robotics project my sophomore year in college and then continued building one basically every year until then. And I just really love the field. I liked, you know, I'm a hands-on person, so I like working with my hands. I like building something. I like the electrical aspects of it. I like soldering. Um, and then I like the coding aspect of it too and making everything work together. And then at the end of the day, it moves and it does something physical. And to me, that was really fascinating. And so robotics has always drawn me in. And so I love robotics. I love self-driving cars. I love everything around that space. So it's extremely interesting to me. If you pay for one nano degree, do you have access to all other nano degrees? Nope. Right now, you just get the nano degree you pay for. What is the best, plat best path to a great robotics career? Uh, work really hard and do awesome robotics projects and find a position you really like doing and excel in it. I, I mean, if you don't really like it, it's not going to be a great job. It, you're not going to excel in your career. So, I mean, the best thing I can say is do what you love. And if that's robotics, then find out what about robotics you like Get a job doing it. Um, start with our course, you know, learn what you can there, and if there's something else you want to learn, if you want to do mechanical design on robotics, take a mechanical course. Uh, there's, there's a lot around it, so it's, it really depends on what you want to do. I was accepted to the term starting this month, but I'm considering holding off until I find some more free time. If I decline the acceptance for the upcoming term, I guarantee a spot for a later date. So I believe in the emails, and if you didn't see this in the emails, make sure you talk to somebody on Slack. Um, you should have gotten the option to pay for the cohort right now or put a, you know, a deposit down for uh, the September cohort. So if you do that, you'll, be, you know, you'll have your spot sealed for September. If you don't do either one, then unfortunately you have to go through the application process again. Will Udacity offer any scholarships in self-driving car or robot robotics nano degree in the near future? Um, I would have to check with our, self, or with our uh, scholarships team to find out about that. We have in the past, I know for self-driving car, offered those, but I'm not sure where that currently sits. What percentage of enrollees complete the course in general in uh, self-driving car and machine learning courses? Um, I don't know if we, I don't know if I can talk about those numbers, so we'll skip over that question. But we actually see, we see quite a bit of people completing it, and, and you know, Self-driving car has been our longest program and it's really exciting that the people that have made it all the way through have gone into term three now and they're going to be putting their code on the car here in a matter of weeks and we actually have beta testers testing that out right now. And so, yeah, our first graduates, within the next couple months, you'll see the first graduates come out of self-driving car, which is really exciting. In terms of the AI and robotics revolution, how far close do you think we are from the AI robotics being used as Udacity instructors and content developers, or generally as AI in the education space? So actually, I think that's one area where teachers are probably in one of the safest positions, and you know, with Udacity as well. You can't, you know, we try to teach everybody in many different ways, and so 
you know, a physical in-person teacher tries to adapt their curriculum to, you know, hit as many people as possible, but then can also adapt on a personal level. Um, I don't think we're quite at that point where um, robotics or AI is, you know, able to supplement, or sorry, not supplement, they can definitely supplement, but they can't replace the educator yet. Um, we'll see how that is. I mean, it's in a really exciting field, and we haven't hit the glass ceiling yet, so it's really interesting to see where we'll go. If we complete the robotics standard degree, will we have access to the material, it, to the materials forever as they evolve in the future? You will. So that's one of the cool things about our program, is that you know people are kind of disappointed that if they don't pass or they, if they don't complete the nano degree, they lose access to it. And we do that because you know our students who have completed the program have now earned this credential, and we we're going to keep updating. We're going to keep adding more to the curriculum. You know our products are kind of a living you know, thing, un unlike a university curriculum. So they change, they improve. And if you pass, then absolutely you're going to have that access. Um, if you don't complete the projects though, you will lose that access. Will I be able to create an actual moving robot after the course? So this gets into what you currently know and um, what we teach. So we again teach more of the software algorithms and intelligence side for robotics. And there are platforms that you could get that you could apply these things to. If you have never really done Linux computing, if you don't know how to do uh, certain like compiling or cross-compiling, if you're, it depends on what level you're trying to get into. If you want to build something from scratch, you're going to need a little bit more than just the software side of things. Required knowledge to start with AI and robotics. Again, some basic, you know, not basic, but up to calculus or linear algebra math, and then programming in C++ or Python, we recommend for our course and for general robotics, but, you know, whatever, you know, some course or some language that you're familiar with. What is my favorite tattoo? Um, my favorite tattoo is actually on my back, so you don't get to see my favorite tattoo, but yeah, there's some of what I got. <laughs> um, I'm on the self-driving car nano degree. You think it's great. Perception is that my perception is that in robotics there are a lot of assignments in common. Is that so? Wait, is it required to go through all lessons even after doing the self-driving car? So yes, it is required to go through all lessons. And while some of the content overlaps a little bit, there is a difference in the the projects and the flavor of the content. So one of the things we want to do is we want to get our projects to be different across our nano degrees and make sure that they're different because if you are paying for multiple nano degrees, doing those projects is a really good challenge for you and something for you to go and now show off in your portfolio. So um, there may be some overlap, but you would be expected to complete all of them and you because they are different projects. What do I think is the most promising area of robotic in robotics? Well, most promising or more ex most exciting? I mean, manufacturing is probably the most promising because it's already happening. You're going to keep seeing it there. Um, it's only going to happen more and more. It takes, you know, these hard, laborious jobs out of, you know, it takes them off of workers' hands, but some of those jobs are really hard. Um, look at some of the reports that Tesla has had from its factories. And so by you putting more robots in those factories, you take humans out of harm's way a little bit more. To me, the more exciting piece is, I guess, the space applications, just because I'm kind of a space geek too, and being able to put things out into space and communicate with them and have them do something is really exciting. Is there an online community of people's success after receiving nano degrees in self-driving cars? Um, well, nobody's received a nano degree in self-driving cars yet, so uh, I guess there's not a community around it, but we do have our Slack channels. How many students per cohort in the ramp? Uh, how many students per cohort of the robotics standard degree? And how many applicants? Again, those are numbers that we don't completely touch on. So, um, right now I'm in. I'm learning machine learning at Udacity. Will it help me get into robotics? And how can I help get a job? What kind of robotic? What kind of jobs will be there? Will there be as a computer scientist student in robotics? So, if you're a machine learning. Uh, if you're taking our machine learning nano degree, absolutely, that's going to set you up for robotics. There's going to be things that you're going to learn in robotics that aren't covered in there, which would be the whole reason of taking it. But yeah, if you're successful and you get your na machine learning nano degree, then I would say you're going to get accepted to the robotics nano degree. And if you don't, well, then you should just probably slack me because we probably should have accepted you because you've completed one of our other advanced nano degrees. 
Um, but as a computer scientist, I think our, if you want on the computer science side, our program directly lines up with that because it is the AI and the artificial intelligence that kind of like, it's applying all of that into the if area of robotics. So if that's what you're looking for, um, those are the kind of, you know, path planning, localization, SLAM, uh, controls, all of that stuff, we definitely, you know, the robotics community definitely needs people who are computer scientists in that. What is my favorite robotics movie? Ooh, well, first one that comes to mind is Chappie. I really like Chappie. It was kind of, it was different and weird and kind of funny. And so it was, I enjoyed that one. Um, I don't know if I have another good one to name off the top of my head, though. Um, there's a lot of them. Transformers are getting a little played out, though. Time commitment needs to be the robotics standard degree. Again, um, we're looking at about 10 to 15 hours, but that's going to like, depend on your uh, experience that's going to move up or down. How to start working on hands-on robotics projects outside of school. So uh, you could, so if you're in school, and I see your next question is about the mechanical course. So if you want to do the mechanical side of things, I recommend learning a CAD program. Um, I am not a mechanical engineer, but I've played around with SolidWorks. Um, so if that's the tool you want to use, and I know they have a good student discount that you can download uh, SolidWorks, and their tutorials are really good. So if you wanted to get into the CAD side of things, you know, that's what I would personally recommend. Um, and then if you, like, depending on the area that you're in, look to see if there's, you know, um, oh, what do they call them? The different, like, hobbyist communities that you can go to and work with 3D printers and the different labs and the uh, workspaces. And so if you can find one of those in your area, that would be great, too. Most uh, robotics careers seem to prefer candidates with at least a bachelor's in computer science. Do you think it is necessary to learn the necessary skills? So a traditional background gives you a lot of the theory. Udacity doesn't cover a lot of theory because our programs are shorter, but we give you a lot of the application and we touch on the theory. Um, but it depends. When you get to a job, you're not always doing theory. You're expected to apply something. And so that's why a lot of our candidates and why a lot of our partners like our programs because when a student comes out of university, they kind of know some things, but they may not have, know how to apply it all. Coming out of our program, you've done projects. You can show that you've done these projects. You can talk about them in a certain way. And so when you're given something, you can go and you can problem solve that project. So I think that some employers are going to be looking for that, but there are a lot of people that are looking, that are more interested in your skills versus the degree you have. How important is programming in robotics? Uh, absolutely important. If you don't program robotics, it, program in robotics, you basically just have a box of parts. So kind of need to do a little bit of that. And the thing jumped again, so hold on. Would you recommend this cat course instead of other AI courses? I would recommend this course if you want to do robotics because it will teach you artificial intelligence applied to robotics. If you want to do like natural language processing and you want to apply certain things, you know, you want to design something like Alexa, then this probably isn't exactly going to be what you're looking for. But if you like the idea of mobile robotics and that be that drones, uh, self-driving cars, robotic arms, any of those areas, then absolutely, this is where you want to take it. How complete will the full course be? For example, creating project documents, strength of materials, mass production, create a robot from scratch, or a complete or partial design. So we aren't doing anything from here's your idea or concept and here's how you take it to production. Um, that's a really great concept and I think that's an exciting area to explore, but that's outside of the scope of our program. Again, we're focused more on the applied artificial intelligence in robotics. Are there any robotics ethics committees that regulate the rapid process, progress of AI robotics, a la Facebook's AIs that make new secret language? Um, there are. Um, I can't give you any names, but I know that you know, even Elon Musk, that's one of his big things. So there's a lot looking into that. I just don't have um, names for those for you. Sorry about that. Who is the best cartoon robot? Bender. It's got to be Bender. I mean, beer, come on. Do robotics nano degree grads maintain access? Yep, so we, if you graduate, you will can maintain access to the course material. And the way I view that, by the way, is kind of like you would in a, or in a school. There's like, as an alumni of a certain school, you get certain privileges. As a dropout, you really don't get any. So um, 
If you're unable to complete one of our programs, you know, we do give an option of, you know, uh, extensions and we manage those in different ways, but they're very limited and the goal is to get you to complete the program. And if you're unable to complete it, you know, you can go and pay for the course again or, you know, I guess try to complete it in the same in the timeline. But um, yeah, we don't have, we do, you know, you do lose access if you don't complete the material. We have deep learning part in the robotics nanodegree program. Is it the same as Siraj's deep learning? So we do have a part in there. It is not the same as Siraj's deep learning. Um, it is more based on segmentation. So if you're familiar with that concept, that should be what it's going to cover. Are there any courses coming based on natural language processing? Or which course is currently good for ones doing natural language processing? You have to look at them because they're not in my wheelhouse, but I think it's either AI or machine learning. I want to say it's machine learning does natural language processing. So if you're looking to do that, I would check that course out. I want to learn Python. Do you have that? Um, we do. Intro to programming. Intro to programming will teach you a lot about programming concepts, including Python. Makerspaces. Yep. Thanks, Tide. That was their comment earlier that I couldn't think of the name. Um, my first year electrical engineering undergrad, what are some courses that I should take to get uh, a good foundation in robotics? So if you're a first year electrical engineering undergrad, and I'm going to be a little biased on this, may, if you really like robotics, um, computer engineering to me is more important because not only do you learn about the electrical engineering side of things, but you're going to learn about how the software interfaces with that um, electrical engineering and the hardware side. So any course that you can see, any course on embedded systems, on some algorithms, um, on real-time operating systems, if you want to get into that, those are good courses to kind of look into. What kind of projects will help get a job in robotics? What projects besides nano degrees should I work on? Great question. Um, so this is a good time to tell a story of one of our students, Glenn Cameron. Um, Glenn, was, he's a robotics student right now in the first cohort. Um, based on, so if you, if you haven't joined our Slack channel, definitely join our Slack channel. And there's a channel in there called Build and Brag that we want to see what you're doing and, you know, the cool robotics projects you're doing. And so Glenn posted his robotic arm that he's built from scratch in this. And he's modeled in Gazebo. And it was just a really fascinating project. Um, and I really liked it. And we were going to TechCrunch Disrupt, or sorry, TechCrunch Robotics out at MIT. And I thought it was a perfect time to take one of our students out there with us based on the hard work that they'd been doing on the side. So I invited Glenn out there. He flew out there. Um, we covered all of his costs to come out there and join us out there. And his robot was featured on the Udacity table at you know, an MIT conference, basically, TechCrunch MIT conference. And while he wasn't exactly looking for a job, he had a lot of job offers coming his way. He had a lot of attention. Um, it had a lot of just really good attention behind that, you know, his concept and what he was doing. So go off on your own. Do, I mean, be creative. I mean, that's what, people want to see you be creative and solve problems. And even if you haven't solved, even if you haven't done it perfectly or even if you haven't completed, I mean, the robotic hand that he did wasn't 100% at the time. And like my senior year design project, when we did our robot, it wasn't 100%, but we had designed everything and we had had it working, but we had parts issues and we were able to talk through all this stuff. And so that experience gives you a whole lot that you can now bring to the table to your employer. So uh, the best thing I can say is to be creative and do something that you really love. Because if you don't love it, you're not going to finish it. You're not, you're going to hit, it's going to be hard at some point and you're not going to push through it. So do something that you really like doing. Do I need a pre-proficient in hardware skills in order to get a job in robotics or will software skills be sufficient? Again, it depends on what you want to do. If you want to do applied artificial intelligence in robotics, then software is going to be fine. If you want to develop more of a full software stack or uh, robotic stack, then you should know some more about the hardware. Um, but again, there's many mechanical engineers who have no idea anything about the software that work in robotics. So there's many different areas. And that kind of gets back into my point of if you're a specialist or a generalist. Will there be a revisit to the projects on how to do them to a production level? Algorithmically and with time, efficiency, mass, production, and time. Not in this nano degree. This nano degree is not, that's kind of outside of this, uh, the focus of what we're looking at doing. Um, but I do think that's interesting. Um, 
Do we think it is it is it an important concept to people? And you can start. You can put some comments in here, and I can look at it later. Is it important to take you know to have something that would take your idea from you know here's an Arduino prototype that I built to here's the full production model that I can sell? Um, let me know if you think that's interesting because that's something that I think is interesting. Are megabots cool? Absolutely. They're going to go fight Japan. That's just cool. Nothing against Japan. I hope Japan has a really cool solution too. Um, kindly list the kinds of jobs that are very demanding in the world market as a computer engineer. Um, so computer engineers are very multidisciplined, um, and so I guess there's a lot of jobs. Uh, I started working in satellite, you know, in the satellite world, and so you a lot of embedded systems, you think of the Internet of Things. Every, there's a processor and there's software going on to everything right now. So, I mean, as a computer engineer, I think there's just a lot that you can do. So, again, it's really hard to say. It's really what you like doing. Um, just because something's in demand doesn't mean you'll like doing it. So maybe, maybe you don't want to do it. It won't be fun. Um, in the U.S., employers don't care about nanodegree. Is it not well known? Is a nanodegree helping get a job? So... That's not entirely true. I mean, you look at some of our big name partners, and we do have employers that are hiring based on the nanodegree work. And, you know, I did work for a large, very large company before this um, that is not a Silicon Valley based company. And they, we, I guess, said we hired, you know, people based on this. Now, I brought the attention to the company because I knew what a nanodegree was, and I was able to show them what that was and what the value was. Um, but we have a lot of we have a lot of big companies. We have a lot of partners. We have a lot of people that are very interested in the skill sets we teach. So um, I think it is helping to get a job, um, and I think it is. It's not. Compl I mean, it's not as known as like a bachelor's degree. Everybody knows what that is. Um, but the nano degree is getting out there. What is the most complex robot I have worked on? Um, uh, personally or professionally? We'll go with personally because I can talk about those a little bit more probably. Um, so for one of my senior design projects, or for my senior design project or in, you know, near the end of my, you know, tenure at university, I built a, I worked on a team, led the team building a drone basically that would use an Xbox Connect to map out three-dimensional imagery. So we did everything from the ground up from concept level to carbon fiber molding, to algorithms, to integration, to ev yeah, everything. Uh, we wrote the remote communication software piece. And so the team I had was awesome. And we worked, you know, really long hours and really, you know, <laughs> a lot of work went into that thing. And it was, it won, you know, the Student's Choice Award. It won the, you know, top choice for the projects. Um, we were able to fund the entire project ourselves based on, calls that I was able, basically business development side that I was able to, you know, get done. And so it was, it was an amazing project to do. And so it was, you know, fantastic working with the team and being able to do that. And so the, a lot went into it. It was pretty complex, uh, very multi-layered, using many different languages to communicate on different levels. And a lot of fun, really, really fun. How is project management at Udacity? Great. I really like it here. Um, I, it's a different world from what I've came from before, but I'm really enjoying my time here and very happy to be here. You just enrolled in the robotics nano degree. Woo! Congrats. Thanks for answering all these questions. Oh, well, I'm excited you're getting started next week too. Not really a question, but I'm really excited to hear that. What senior design robotics projects did you do in undergrad? So I just talked about that. Um, how was Boston TechCrunch Robotics Day? It was awesome. It was really cool to see a lot of the projects. Unfortunately, I got stuck not listening to as many talks as I wanted to and manning more of a booth, but that's okay. I had a lot of fun, made a lot of good contacts, and that was actually my first time out in Boston, so it was a fun time to explore. Um, if you build a death ray robot, should you post it and build and brag? Um, yes, because I want to see it. What hardware do you see being simulated in software that's cutting edge or surprises you? Um, actually, I think NVIDIA has a really cool, if you're not familiar with it, the TX2 platform I think is extremely interesting and capable. And so they are simulating that in their, uh, the, Isaac, um, the Isaac simulator they're going to be coming out with. I believe they're simulating that. It hasn't been out yet. But, so you can simulate a lot of things. And so I'm, uh, to me, that's a cutting edge platform. I don't think there's anything else like that on the market. So I really like the TX2. Graduate in mechanical engineering, zero knowledge on programming, and have an idea of building an AI autonomous quadcopter with vision systems. Gender okay. 
Um, so if you have no programming knowledge at all, um, intro programming would be good because it's going to touch on programming concepts in many different facets. And then Python, you know, you'll learn a little bit of Python. And then, again, it's still a leap to go from there to the uh, robotics program, but um, keep an eye out. We're working on ways to we can make more of a, you know, transition from, you know, nothing to 100. So, does the course cover any of the electronic theory in its terms? Um, basically, it doesn't. No. Sorry. I feel the gap between indie projects and how to get them into production is a gap in indie gravel face. Yeah, so there is a gap to getting into in production, um, but that's you're, you go to a company whether you come out of university or you come out of a nano degree, they don't expect you to know how to get it into production, and that's usually not the you know individual contributor's role to make sure that it's getting into production. There's you have many other experienced people that are working on that productization of it, so. I wouldn't be too worried about that unless you're trying to make something on your own. You know, you should understand what goes into it. If you can understand some of the production, to like uh, what goes into, like you know, from A to B, you know. But I, I wouldn't worry too much about that. And we jump one more time. One. Can I predict the outcome of two football teams' games using a feed-forward neural network? Um, maybe. I don't really know. <laughs> Uh, try it out and see if it predicts correctly. What's the best way to learn about R tosses? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, I haven't played a whole lot with them. Um, one uh, podcast that I really like personally listening to is called Embedded. They talk about a lot of the tools that are used in, in the embedded world and R tosses and things like that, and they do link to a lot of different things. So I don't personally have a good recommendation other than the podcast, but um, check that out. You mentioned that na nano degree helped you get a job, but there are no statistics about percentages of people being employed. So we do have some internal statistics about the percentage of people being employed. What I was saying is that I don't think that they're, well, I know that they're not accurate because I don't even think I maybe have been, I, I know people who haven't filled out the survey or, you know, people that have just gotten jobs that aren't maybe with one of our partners, but got it as a direct relation from the self-driving car nano degree program. Um, and so it's hard to track those people. And so that's one of the challenges that I'm looking into is how do we figure out somebody who's taken a job, whether it's with one of our partners or somewhere else, how do we capture that information so that we can produce accurate statistics? So it's a hard, it's a hard thing, problem to solve. Um, how to get a full scholarship with a robotics standard degree. Um, keep an eye out. I'm not too sure. Again, we have a robotics uh, or we have a scholarship team that works on all that. Is the robotics slack open to students of other nano degrees? I'm currently in term two SDC. It is. Um, I believe, Kyle, if you could, if you're still on, if you could link it. Otherwise, let me look real quick. It is udacity-robotics.slack.com. And so you can join that. That's open to everybody. Hey, look, Kyle beat me to it. Um, sorry, I'm getting through these kind of linearly. Um, who's the who who? Who, wait, who are the who's who of the robotics nano degree? Uh, you mean company-wise, or do you mean um, as far as our team? You clarify that a little bit, and I'll try to answer before we get off here. Should I learn Arduino for AI flight simulation or Raspberry Pi for of a quadcopter? So Arduino's okay, but Arduino is um, Arduino's just. It's not, you're not going to get a job off of an Arduino project. Um, so with the Raspberry Pi, at least you can put ROS on there, and that's kind of what we teach in our curriculum. So, uh, can, can, can I help you out with what features to use for training on the football? Like, I think that's the question. I think if you figured out what features to use and you could accurately predict that, you would make tons of money on the you know, if you could predict the outcome of football games. So I don't have a good answer for that. <laughs> Good luck, though, and if you do, let me know. <laughs> Best courses which you could learn from Udacity for AI Swarm quadcopters. I don't think we actually touched on anything Swarm yet. It is a topic that I think is very interesting, but um, I don't have a good solution for um, to give you for that yet. Oh, 
And I'll talk to uh, Michael here. It's uh, robotics, or it's uh, Udacity dash robotics. Oh, that'll leak him. Okay, cool, awesome. He's got it. Um, and what are the main people at Udacity we should know in the robo nano degree? So if you're in the Slack channel, you know Mike Salem. Um, he's our student services lead. He's great. Tries to introduce, you know, talk to everybody uh, who's coming in, and he's your point. If you have any problems, like he will definitely try to address those first. Um, we've also got Ryan, who's our curriculum lead right now that you've seen on camera. Um, Everybody else is kind of more behind the scenes, so you probably won't see them out there as much. Um, if you want to know more people, I can go through a list of people. But we, I mean, we have a really great team here for the Robo, but it's not, that's, it's not that interesting. I don't know. Maybe it's interesting to you. Let me know if it is. Um, ask, back to the beer question again. This was a Racer 5 IPA, and this one's like, which I probably needed to open up, but Back in Black, 21st Amendment Brewery. I need to bring some more. I'm from Colorado, so New Belgium all the way, but this is what I got stuck with. Um, got advice to someone completely new to software engineering, and I'm going to start wrapping up these uh, questions here because we're going to be wrapping up here in a second. Completely new to software engineering and looking to land a job in the field. You would have to get a little bit more, uh, ex I guess, specific with that. I don't know what you're talking about. Is like, Do you know software engineering? Like you've completed a degree. You've completed a nano degree. Um, but again, if you're looking to land a job, do something that sets you apart. Get, become, like, get a really good story to tell. Work on a project. Solve problems. Even if you aren't successful in them, being able to talk about how you thought through it. Because what, uh, what a hiring manager wants to know is, can you problem solve? Can I throw a problem in front of you? And can you think through it in the right way to be successful at that? So that's a really important skill. Um, I'm enrolled in the MI or the ML and the deep learning nano degrees. What should be my strategy towards my career? I want to do AI nano degree two. Should I look at jobs first or complete an AI nano degree? I will never tell you to not be looking at jobs. I mean, I know people who have who were in term one in self driving car and got jobs because they just started looking. So, absolutely, apply out there, see what you can. If you're not getting hits, keep going. I mean, and even if you do get your first job. Keep going through another nano degree because I was employed. I wasn't looking to make a move when I took the self-driving car one. I just wanted to learn a little bit more about the field that I was already in. So, um, do, 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 do. any further further courses to get better at ROS? So ours is great, but there's also I think the ROS course. If you go through those tutorials, um, go through those tutorials on the ROS site. Those are really good too. Can I share my height, weight, shoe size? Perception will predict my gender. I hope you can predict my gender. If not, then I think you need to work on some more machine learning algorithms. <laughs> can the next robots, or beer and robots, include a beer pouring robot? We'll see. I'll see if I can get time to do anything with that. Um, recommended skills for learning the electrical side. So I really like SparkFun. They have some tutorials on soldering and things like that. So check out their site. Do you think the course is doable for people who work full time? Absolutely. I was doing the self driving car course working full time. Almost everybody I know is either a student or has a job and is doing you know, nano degrees full time. So, um, I don't need a job. I'm an entrepreneur. So, could you please suggest a better way to start with Arduino or Raspberry for a copter? Um, so, it depends on. There's a lot. There's there's a whole lot that goes into that. That could be a whole other discussion about what you'd actually want to apply. Um, if you know, yeah, it's there's a lot. Look, what I can, yeah, like it looks like Kyle's linking some stuff. Look up, um, look up projects and see if something that you'd want to do and emulate. So, autonomous drones are controlled. Autonomous, I think, will be the future, but. Anyways, um, looks like that's caught up with all the questions. Um, it's 9 o'clock our time. And so thank you for joining me. Cheers. And I hope you can join us next time for our next Beer and Bots. Thank you.